Hello and well met. This is Laverne with the Fancy Grounds Academy. Today I'm going to be taking a look at some handout material that was published fairly recently by the D&D Beyond community. So I'm going to take you to that page real quick. Uh, the content from here does require that you have an account there. But this is uh, something that you could add potentially to your campaign if you want more content and you don't want to write it yourself, that sort of thing. Or you can even change what they've given you. So this is a D&D Beyond account, and this is a downloadable handout. What they've done is they give you a, a graphic with some news on here. It's supposed to kind of emulate a like a local paper for Fandolin. And then it has a couple articles in here, and then it talks about you know, like what, what's in here and why they did this. And then it's supposedly there's some kind of adventure coming up in the Discord for the D&D &D, um, community. But I don't know if I'm going to participate in that, but I did enter some of this stuff into Fantasy Grounds. So I kind of wanted to take a look at that and just kind of go over that a little. So what I've done is just kind of copy and pasted all of the different uh, content in the... Um, adventure module or the in this case this was a handout so here I got an image this is like a message that you get that's probably delivered to you probably on the road or when you're in Fandolin and then you have this the actual paper itself so this is the actual uh, graphic image that they give you with the article and then here is the article in Fantasy Grounds format and any of the speech uh, content or the bubbles I can click on this bubble and it will send it to the chat and you can also change the speaker if you want so this is kind of a, a generic kind of saying here but this was supposed to be from one of the towns folks so you can actually um, look at this and it says that uh, chess of 25 which is the day and the month and Fandolin ambushed wagons dead travelers and a town looking for answers uh, I was supposed to receive a shipment of the equipment last week says uh, uh, Lenine Graywin, owner of the Lion Shield Coster in Fanlin. These provisions are crucial to keeping things running smoothly in town. So there's like, you know, like little role-playing elements. So th this thing here, I can actually copy this, the name of this speaker, and I'm going to hit Control Copy. And you got to make sure it's unlocked, too. And then what I'll do is hit Control Tab, and what that'll do is put this little dot in here, and then I'm going to paste the name of the speaker. And let's see, it won't let me paste, so I'll just type it in. Lenin Greywind. And so what happens is that it will change the chat in the chat window. So now that I'm doing that, I'm going to do the same thing here. So this is uh, Townsfolk here. So again... I'm going to hit control tab while I'm clicked inside of this uh, chat frame. And you get the chat frame by either right clicking and going to your paragraph types and you can change it there. Or if you know the, the shortcut, you can highlight the text, you hit control three and that will convert it into these blocks. So I just kind of let you know. You can have multiple paragraphs, but you have to hit shift in between them, not enter. So if you have another paragraph and you're at the end of the sentence, you need to hit enter and shift and that'll get you a second paragraph. Otherwise, it'll create it'll it'll take you out of the chat bubble. So that's like a little formatting thing. And then um, for for to assign a speaker. So this is going to be the townsfolk. I'm going to hit control tab. And then I'm going to put townsfolk as the speaker in this case. So anytime you have text dialogue, if you want to be more specific as to who's saying it, you can assign a speaker here by just uh, inserting a speaker by hitting control tab. So if not, it's going to look like this in the chat window here. So let me bring up my pointer. So it'll look like this down here if you don't have any formatting or you're, you're not um, designating a speaker. But now that I have a speaker in here, it'll say that this person is saying this. Same thing with this one. Now it's the townsfolk. So this next one says, let's see, a group of red brands have set up shop in Tracender Manor at the edge of town. They're getting bolder and shaking down local businesses, said Freda. So this is Freda. So I'm going to hit Control-Tab. 
and just kind of type her name up front here. And then, emboldened by a lack of resistance from Townmaster Wester, the Red Brands have quickly tightened their grasp on Fandolin. And they say, they murdered our Thalor local woodcarver, said Tol uh, Toblin. So Toblin is going to be the next speaker. So con control tab. And that will give you the, the little cursor here so that you can enter it. So control tab. I gotta make sure I'm in the right area. Control tab. Okay. And then that's Toblin, the the innkeeper. So there we go. So th that's how you assign a speaker in here. The rest of this is for the GM. But if, apparently, if if you send this to your players, you can just send the graphic, the image. And it's just kind of convenient to have all the text in here. You don't have to do this. But there is another way that, that to present this. So this is a story entry in Fantasy Grounds, but if you wanted to, if you want to take the extra effort, since I've already done most of the formatting already, it wouldn't take much to put this into a story entry in the format of a uh, reference manual. So if I go to Modules and click down here on the bottom right where it says Builder, you can do it that way. So that'll bring up the Reference Manual Builder, and then you just build your chapters. So in this case, we'll just, it's called New Chapter, but we'll call this the, the Fandolin Post, because it's a paper. And then the new subchapter could be that the about the goblins here. So we can put that in there. And then the new page would be however you want to set this up. So... We're going to put a header block here, and that's going to be the Fandolin post. And then we can put a text block in here next if we want. So I can copy all this out, but I think the next thing I'm going to put in here is the image for the, the actual um, newspaper. So the next block that we're going to put in here is going to be an image block. So that's blank right now. So what I'll do is go to the images. So these are I've already imported these and I converted them to a WebP file and I also titled them. So the the image that I want to put in there is the handout for the Fandolin post. So you put that in there and that's basically what it will look like. Um, you know, in your reference manual. And then you can actually change the title of this. So I can just put Fandolin Post down here if I want to. So it looks cleaner. So you don't have like the ugly title in there. And do something like that. And you can use this. Uh, you can share this image with your players if you want, however you want to do it. But I'm going to go ahead and. Um, add the text that I put in there for me. Uh, this wouldn't necessarily have to be for the players, but just to make it a little easier for me uh, when I run the game. So I'm going to add another type of block. So this is going to be uh, just a standard text block. So text, there's, there's right, left, there's dual text block. I just need this. Uh, let me see, do I want it dual text? Yeah, maybe. So let's do it like that. Let's try to set it up like the paper, kind of. Yeah, actually, I won't do that because I don't have these images, so I'll just do it my own way. So here's the text block. And then I'm going to hit Control A. And then Control Copy. And then paste it in here. And that should be the majority of the images. And it kept all the formatting that I've already done. So that was pretty simple. Now, if I want to add these images in here, like in line, I'd have to create another um, block. So what I'll do is I'll leave those links there or or don't have to, depends on what you want to do. But this thing here, I can add in another image block if I want. But when you, when you have it like this, this looks pretty good. It's not bad. So here's the paper, here's that. There's another handout here, but this is a link down here, so I don't have to worry about that. But this is an image that I could embed in here. So let's do that. So 
I'll open this back or unlock this again. And then what I'll do is I'll insert, um, probably insert an image block in here. Let's see, image block. Yeah, so this goes here. And then I'll go ahead and drag and drop this kind of like a preview of an adventure that's coming up. Actually, I might change that to, let's see, clear image link. This is so you can scale it down if you want, or you can scale it up. Well, I think I'll just leave it like that. I don't, I don't think I need it to be too, too perfect. And then there was another one that was like a message that I could put in there, but I don't, I don't need to do that. So this is all the the formatting, it kept all that, and then I just inserted this other link because this goes to this adventure, and then there is a actual link to the article, which will take you to this where I got the information from. So you do need to have a D and D Beyond account. I don't know if it can be a free one or not, but that's where this came from. I got an advertisement, and then um, I don't know if I necessarily use that inside of the game. But there are other things that I might want to look at. Like this is a thing about the mine crystals. So this is an article that goes kind of hand in hand. It's released uh, in the 19th. It's coming up. So these might this might be a nice little accessory for me to to add into Fantasy Grounds, so that I have access to this, so I can read up on this stuff because it's talking about the seven different types, and then it tells you how to use them in the game. And there's some FAQs, and then there's a meta magic uh, thing about a little blurb about that. It says you're able to bend the rules of spell casting to suit your needs, increase the power of your spells, so on and so forth. So it's kind of like a sorcerer. Yeah, so quick in mind, subtle. Yeah, so these work a lot like the sorcery um, powers do. So there is a careful mind crystal allows up to three creatures within a spell's area to effect to automatically succeed on their saving throws or save. So this is kind of cool. So as a cleric, druid, or wizard, or other spell casting class, um, you may not uh, be used to being able to tweak your spells, but this kind of gives you uh, kind of gives you like a sorcerer ability uh, if you have these crystals. I don't know if they get consumed or not. But it says that it contains sorcerer's potential. So it allows you to have meta magic for non sorcerers. So that's a, kind of a cool thing. I might enter this article at another time. And then what I'm going to do is um, save all these little handouts to, to use throughout the adventure. So if I need more content or if I need some more information i'll have it right there in fantasy grounds and not have to jump over to the to the website so it's one thing i try to avoid um in fantasy grounds as much as i can is i try to keep everything in the inside the game i don't want to have to keep moving back and forth between the different areas so that's you know basically the the main gist of this but um, what, when you have the text entered in here and not just an image, it's searchable. So if you wanted to search this, you, you could. Let me see if it gives me a goblin or not. Yeah, there's no no actual good search thing in here. i got to set that up. But essentially, this would be a chapter thing. I have to go in and set those up. But that's basically it. That's... Uh, that's how this thing, how you can kind of make your own sub-chapters. So I can divide this all up into into sections of different pages, but I don't think it's necessary. It's not enough information in here to do it. So, but anyways, that's it. That's all I have for you today. I didn't want to draw this out. I'm going to um, actually go cook some food. And um, maybe tomorrow I'll input the other, that mind magic information in here. But essentially just converting the information um, like I said, I usually start with the images and I convert those over to WebP so they don't take as much room. And then I'm going to um, enter the text and then make it a story format initially. And then if I get time, if I want to, I can just put it in as a reference manual and, and run everything out of there if I need to. And this would be in addition to the module when it comes out. So I can actually 
take all this information, export it as a module, including all the map work that I had done, and then change it over to whatever I need to when it comes time to getting closer to the adventure. So doing all this prep work ahead of time, it's going to pay off. It's it's really going to um, it's going to you know make give me some more things to look at and gives me a little bit of um, inspiration about how maybe I'd use the town. So I don't know if I'd necessarily use this paper thing. It's a little too modern for me, but I might use some of the the lore or some of the stuff that people are saying. You know that that sort of thing. So you may not use this stuff, but Essentially, it's just a way to kind of embellish what you have. Um, and this kind of talks about the Tribor Trail, the goblins. Be this is one of the articles. So the excerpt on goblins uh, warn the party that there's dangers on the Tribor Trail, which will allow them to prepare contingencies in case they are attacked. These preparations will pay off during the goblin ambush encounter in Chapter 1. So this would assume that they're either already in Phandalin or they're getting a copy of it wherever they're at so maybe they're staying in Neverwinter but they you know they're going back and forth between Fandolin and they have a copy of a recent paper so that's kind of where this is kind of doesn't hold up too well for me because I think that um, in most cases you're not going to start in Fandolin but it doesn't mean you can't I just don't think it fits with the narrative for the original adventure but the way this thing is shaken out, it looks to me like you basically have two separate modules. One is the classic kind of, you know, lost mine with a couple minor changes. And then you have the other half, which is the, you know, the Underdark and the Far Realm. And uh, taking your adventures outside of Phandalin and uh, tracking down these problems that are occurring in town. So it's, it's kind of like a two-in-one adventure uh, from what I can see so far. And I've read some reviews on it, and there's some people that are happy with it, some that aren't. It, some of the comments are like, um, it looks like they took chat GPT and wrote an article and then just kind of edited it. And then, you know, they just threw it on top of the old adventure. And then some people are saying, oh, this fits great with my current campaign. And so it, it just depends on what your needs are and, and how you perceive this. But I'm going to try to use it to the best I can and to uh, to the best advantage uh, possible. I'm going to run a paid game, so I want to have as much um, detail and information as I can. And I don't necessarily mean I'm going to use this stuff. It may just be for me, you know, to to use for reference and such. But anyways, guys, you take care. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I might stream tomorrow, depending on what's happening here at home. Uh, I'll probably end up working on that other piece, and then i got to get back on the map. So it's kind of taking a break from those, because those can get rather tedious after a while. Um, oh, that wasn't good. I just I just took my whole page out. <laughs> but anyways, that's not a big deal. I can, I can get by. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Just copy and paste it over, because that's what I did earlier. I just went hit, I hit Control-A, Control-Copy. And then uh, we did a text block. And then hit Control V. And that brings back the whole thing. So that's why I kind of like doing it here in the story entry.